don't know why, but I'm running. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Lola's farm. Yeah, you gotta run too. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting ready to bring a baby back here to Panama, into the jungle, to our off-grid house, and it's not ready for a baby yet. We're getting really, really close, but there's just a couple last things I need to check off the list. And today, it's gonna be all about finishing up the back, sealing in the garage door, sealing in these walls. I know this looks a little, it doesn't look too great back here, but by the end of this video, it's gonna be looking awesome. What are you doing? Are you so happy? So Sadie is still waking up around every two, sometimes three hours throughout the night. I don't know how much longer this will go on for. I know every baby is different. Something that people have been telling me to do is try to keep her awake and lively throughout the day, which I definitely have not been doing. I usually just kind of let her sleep when she wants to sleep. So I think today I'm gonna try to give that a go. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. <gasps> <laughs> a few videos ago, you may have seen us build this garage door. Now, you can see the space on the side. We need to seal this. Why do we need to seal this? Why is that so important? Well, look. Look at the humidity outside. 90% outside, 74% humidity in here. That makes an environment for a lot of mold, a lot of moisture. And if we can seal this off, running this dehumidifier will be so much more efficient. The windy season is here. It's come, which means a lot less rain. We're gonna go from getting maybe about eight to 10 inches in a month to now less than one inch in a month, which means not a lot of water, not a lot of rain, because we do everything caught off this roof. All of our water comes off this roof. But because it's still so humid, what we can do is we can use the water coming out of our dehumidifier. We process all of our water ourselves. We run it through sediment filters, we run it through carbon filters, we make sure it's clean and perfect to drink, and we test it regularly. And the water that comes out of this it's distilled water. There might be some bacteria in it, but that'll all come out in the filtration process anyway. putting on her first ever shoes. <laughs> Look at these little moccasins. <laughs> How the heck do you get these things on? Oh my God. <laughs> Look how cute these are. It is so crazy seeing here. This is like one of the most famous fruits that they sell in Panama. And there, it's probably like 10 times as many of these for maybe $2. Here, it's $10 a pound. Insane. I'm trying to find you sugar-free ice cream for tonight. So we can either do cookies and cream, birthday cake, or double chocolate. Which do you say? And now I just need to mark all the spots where I need to cut in so I can get this really tight to the metal. This is usually when I call it quits for the night, but I, uh, I'm i running out of time. I have a flight out of here in uh, three days. I don't want to leave the workshop the way it is for a month before we come back and bring a baby back here. Having it safe for her is my number one priority right now, and I just don't think it is. There's still a lot of stuff I have to do. But I just marked where I need to cut off, and now I'm just gonna buzz all this off with a jigsaw.
It's hard keeping up with everything on my own. Cleaning, cooking, building, feeding the animals, taking them for walks, doing all that stuff. It's super tough not having Kaylee here. And it makes for late nights for me. So I gotta hop on here to do a little quick event session with you guys, all right? With my little angel over here. She's being a little angel. She wasn't just being an angel though. She was crying hysterically. Then she took a giant poop and now she's fine, kind of. <laughs> but I need to express to you guys how much I freaking hate the word colic. First of all, that word just sounds disgusting. Second of all, it's like the worst definition of a word. When you look it up, it's something along the lines of when your baby cries and cries and cries and cries and you don't know why. No, 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 no. My baby is crying because there's something going on that she needs from me. I just don't know what that is yet, but I'm gonna freaking figure out that she's out. All right, my baby is not colicky. And none of your babies are colicky. They're just a little bit more emotional than the most. So forgive me if I'm, oh, okay. I know, you're done with that. She's done with the vent session and so am I. We're starting the day off with a little bit of an adventure this morning. We live in arguably one of the best coffee towns in the world. Every year there's huge international coffee competitions and every year a lot of that coffee is used from this town, Boguete, because Panama, the, the coffee production in Panama is so little. If you put it in comparison to Brazil, the amount of coffee that they produce here is like one one, one, one thousandth of the amount of pounds that they produce in Brazil. So what they have to do in Panama is they have to go for quality. So the farmers here are trying to really make the coffee taste as good as they possibly can. Look how dangerous this is. Half his row just fell that fell away. Oh my god. Hello. Hola. Hola. What is going on? Are you ready? Every year for Christmas, we put together a sampler tasting pack that really showcased the best of what Bogete has to offer. And today, we're going to all those farms and picking that coffee up. So for this tasting experience, we wanted to offer three coffees from three different farms processed in three different ways. The first coffee is from here. This is Don Pepe Estate. The coffee we got from Don Pepe is a washed coffee. And this is what washed coffee looks like right here. You can see the coffee fruit is stripped off of the beans and it's all laid out to dry here. Just with the bean, no fruit, no mucilage, just like this. So for those of you guys that don't know, this is Arturo. He is our partner in our coffee business. And what can you tell these guys to expect from a washed coffee? All right, wash is the most traditional or most common uh, kind of profile to find uh, because it dries faster. Other markets uh, like uh, European and Asian markets are looking more for naturals and fermented, so they're moving away from that. If you've never dabbled in specialty coffee before, you've probably, most likely, only had washed coffee. So the first coffee in our cupping set is from Don Pepe. It's their washed. It's a catoyi. I think it tastes a little bit like toasted marshmallows. Welcome to the second coffee farm. This is Finca Bonita Springs, and this is where we sourced the natural coffee from. Bonita Springs is actually a little bit lower in elevation. So if you look, all of this fruit is already ripe. It's ready to go. This is called uva ripe. All of the coffee that we get is hand-picked, which is the best way to harvest coffee because it makes sure that you're picking it at peak ripeness. Huge coffee producing regions like Brazil and Colombia use machines. And I'll put in a video of how those machines work. And they basically just grab the whole tree and shake it and everything falls off. From the unripe green fruit to the red fruit to the yellow fruit to the orange fruit, leaves, branches, bugs, and everything in between. The bean inside 
uh, acquires or absorbs all the properties of flavor of the middle skin and the outer skin which means that all those enzymes all those fruity notes are translated into the coffee profile coffee that's dried with a natural process is just it's generally just sweeter the coffee that we source from here that's in our set tastes like dried banana dried fruits and prunes Welcome to our third and final farm. This is Lamastis Estates, and this is the farm that we bought our fermented profiled coffee from. We really wanted to include coffee from Lamastis in this cupping set because it's one of the most famous farms in the world. Not even in Panama, but in the world. They set the record for the most expensive coffee sold at $4,100 a pound. And all that coffee came from right here, in this room. Look at all this coffee. From Lamassus, we really want to share their fermented profile coffees. And what happens with this coffee is once it's picked, the day it's picked, the fresh coffee is put in these tanks to ferment. And they can do it anywhere between 100, 150 hours. Everyone kind of has their own secret sauce. After the coffee spends some time in those tanks, it's left out here to dry. And this is to get the moisture content lower before peeling and roasting. If you're wondering at this point what the reason for the fermentation is, it's to make the, su the sweet notes, to make the flavors of the coffee even more pronounced and even stronger. And the coffee that we bought has notes of cherry, passion fruit, and even a little hint of liquor. I love days like today so much and learning and sharing all that with you guys. Before moving to Panama, the experience of coffee, like the whole growing and processing part of it is so removed. We just get these little pods and this brown powder is just encapsulated in these capsules. We put it into a machine and the coffee comes out. So if you guys want to try these coffees that we showed you today, here they all are here. They're all lined up. We're getting ready to ship all of these out. And you can see inside, we have all three samples. Each one is numbered, one, two, and three. And this is so you guys can do a blind tasting and evaluate these for yourself and see what you notice and see what you experience. There'll be instructions on how to evaluate these coffees in this bag as well as all the tasting notes and all the details about the coffee after you've tried them. So if you wanna try this coffee out or maybe you wanna give it as a Christmas gift for someone that you know that's a coffee lover, the link's down in the description below. Good morning. Are we doing our exercises? Yeah, we're doing our exercises. It's crazy, you guys. I feel like every single day she's getting more and more um, just aware and engaged with everything around her. Are you smiling at all the people? Who's in there? Those are all our friends. Come over here, come on close, come on. Come here, come on. Good girl. All right, it's time to get back to work. Time to seal this garage door in, get these pieces in on the side. <laughs> He's hidden. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Kake sees a face and everything, he takes a photo of it and texts it to all of us. Because he just sees faces everywhere. Outlets, wood, rocks. It has a name. How do you read that word? Pareidolia. Is this a disorder that you see faces and everything? Uh-huh. <laughs> The door is sealed, except for right there. I need to put one more barrel lock right here. It locked just like this. I need to also put on the bottom just to pull. You can see there's a little space right here. And if I can just pull this in a little bit, it'll help fill that gap. But I am just so happy with how this thing came out. It's just such a big improvement. You guys have no idea how loud this garage door is. The only person who really knows is Kake. Because Kaki was the first person to ever sleep in this workshop. Well, I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> Man, this is brutal. It might be hard for you to see, but you can probably hear it. But when it rains, it just slows you down. And you're just kind of waiting around and waiting around. 
I want to get up on the roof now and I want to install the flue pipe for the stove and I also want to seal up all of the screws for the roof, but I gotta wait now. And if you think I'm joking about the rain, just look at this. Daily, weekly, not that much. Monthly, okay, five inches is pretty good. Yearly, 162 inches of rain over the last 12 months. Don't move to Panama, don't move to Bogete unless you like rain. 12, so 44. I think I'm, I moved this in a very drastic way. What do you have to say for yourself? <clears throat> I moved this. Jordan Seglo and Kelly Debo with- This is how you know we've made it, Kake. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> Man. <laughs> now, now you can say that you're famous. Today, we will be going over the nomadic movement biography, net worth, and <laughs> Man, now they know that you are Look it. Now they know that you are rich. How do they know my birthday? Now they know you're rich, you're a millionaire. They know you're exposed. ...to a restaurant manager and had quite the experience before quitting and joining Kaylee on a ride towards a world full of adventure. How do they know all this? also from Massachusetts and was a former licensed esthetician. She recently what? became a mother of an adorable and healthy baby named Sadie. Born what? in December this year through Waterbury. Congratulations on the... Yeah? We made it. What? Look it. Are you excited oh God, to see what, what living that? out of a van looks like? Come on, and let's dive deeper into their wonderful and that? exciting <laughs> their annual income amounting to approximately $60,000. They also... $60,000?! Red right exposed. Well, celebrity net worth and lifestyle. Thanks for the video, but I got, nah. it's just all that was just not was wrong. Okay, what are we gonna do? What's the plan? Ah, where's my harness? You need your brain, or your harness for this. Your... Oh my god! How does it feel like when you are rich, that rich, and you're opening holes on the roof <laughs> instead of hiding someone? How does it feel like living in bouquet? <laughs> with, uh, in bouquet without a T. Was it a book? How'd you say it? Book? Bouquet. Book. Hey, I live in book. <laughs> The boot is installed. We got a pretty good install on it. And I'm pretty happy about it. Now I'm just gonna go around. Even though I put butyl tape all the way around, I'm gonna put a layer of silicone too. You guys saw 160 inches of rain in a year. So there's gonna be a lot of water going over this boot. So I'm gonna do the best that I can to make sure this is sealed tight. There's my sloppy boot install. I'm not the cleanest when it comes to silicone, but all I really care about is that this sucker doesn't leak. I don't think it's gone up, but if it does, I can come back up and fix it. Done. I just put elastomeric paint, which is like a rubberized paint on all the screws just to stop any water from penetrating through the rubber washers. Unfortunately, if you look, it's not the exact same color brown. I don't know if you can tell. They only had one color brown and it was called Cafe, which is coffee. And my roof looks like coffee. So I figured this would also look like coffee, but it's like red. It's like reddish brown, it's like maroon. We're probably gonna paint this whole roof at some point because our workshop is white and black and then a brown roof doesn't really match too well. So we're probably gonna paint this whole thing at some point anyway, so it's fine. But I'm ready to call it a night. My hands are so painted and dirty and I really wanna make a fire. I just got off the phone with Kaylee. She's struggling pretty hard. Uh, I've been gone for three weeks now and I think it's catching up with her. Lack of sleep, lack of support with Sadie, just doing everything on her own. 
I'm ready to go back home. I need to go and be with my family. But I got a couple days left. Two days. Two days and then I head out of here. But my heart's breaking pretty hard right now. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm still just gonna try to get as much done as possible. So the move here is as seamless as possible. So I'll see you guys bright and early.